I had this great opportunity to work at NASA uh, Jet Propulsion Labs right when the Voyager 2 mission was flying by Jupiter and its moons Io and Europa. And all this data was coming back and all these images for the first time seeing Jupiter up close. It was such an exciting time. You know, right now we are used to seeing everything on our cell phone or a mobile device, but back then they brought in television screens into the cafeteria and we would just be glued to those screens as we saw fresh images, close-up images of, of Jupiter and its moons, you know, flash on the screens. And it was such an exciting time. And I got to analyze so many, so much data back then and work on algorithms. I also worked on another mission. And back then, that mission was called the Solar Polar Solar Probe. Over time, they changed it to the Parker Solar Probe, which just recently launched. Now, that Parker Solar Probe, you know, we were doing some things of like analyzing, you know, how do you get to close to the sun. We wanted to get to 4 million miles close to the sun. Right now we're about 93 mi million miles. So it's like getting on a football field from the 100 yard, from one end zone, all the way to the four, uh, four yard line. I mean, you've got to be really close. And that means it's going to be really hot. There's going to be a lot of solar wind. Uh, there's going to be a lot of radiation. You may have asteroids hit you. So how big can the space capsule be? What kind of instrumentation? We didn't even have the materials developed that could withstand the heat at that time. So it was a project which I realized, you know, it was huge, big thinking. And I knew it was going to take not just years, but decades to come to fruition. And that was when my um, Stanford acceptance came in. And I remember thinking, gosh, I've had an opportunity at the Voyager, work on the Voyager 2, on Solar Pro, but just getting my dream come true to go to Stanford. And that's when I went to Stanford.